Hello, I'm David Kapelke. In this presentation, I shall explore how one citizen science program, the Gladstone Region Air Quality Community Group, managed to gain funding and support from industry while maintaining its independence. The first contributing factor to the success of the group is having a program that arises from an identified need in the local community. Air quality has long been a topic of community interest in the industrial port city of Gladstone in central Queensland. The recent establishment of liquefied natural gas plants re-energised this interest. As a result, industry engaged in a proactive consultation program with the local community. Therefore, there was a fortuitous alignment between the goals of the air group and industry. A second factor was the high level of credibility and information provided by the group whenever it engaged with the community. This is because the group drew upon data collected by the Queensland Department of Environment and Science. The third factor was being creative in the design of the group's structure and operating procedures. While the group welcomed all people, it established different categories of membership. One category was for those in the community who only sought ongoing information. For others who were seeking a more active role, another category of membership was established. This category included many industries. All citizen science programs require funds to enable them to operate most effectively. To increase engagement and participation in the community, it was decided not to ask community members to contribute financially. However, industry and local government were approached for annual contributions. By seeking industry funding, it may be perceived that industry might be provided with an opportunity to influence the independence of the group. To build independence, it was decided that industry would not have voting rights in the group decisions. This funding has enabled the group to establish a secretariat. The secretariat is an independent company and is responsible for developing resources and implementing operational matters. A fourth factor is the need for independent, reliable and valid data. It was decided to participate in an already existing worldwide monitoring program of particulate matter. Monitoring units used in this program are linked to the internet and data are automatically uploaded to a publicly available site on the web. The group's own website contains links to this Purple Air program, as well as to the Queensland Department of Environment and Science website. This displays government data and so allows for a comparison of program and government data. A final contributing factor is the quality of information contained in the group's educational materials. Information again is drawn from the Queensland Department of Environment and Science. As a result, materials reflect sound scientific information rather than reflecting some agenda. It is through these scattered strategies we believe the group has been able to implement a successful citizen science monitoring and education program. These strategies also attempt to address any unconscious bias within the group that may be created because of our industry-based funding. However, unconscious bias by its very nature is a charge that can be laid against any group or individual. I hope the experience of the Gladstone Region Air Quality Community Group may provide a valuable insight into the complexities faced and how they were addressed and provide an example for others seeking industry funding for their own citizen science programs. Thank you.